Hi everybody. Thanks for joining me today. This is Midnight Cry with Deborah. And I have a word from the Lord to bring to you. He told me it was for every hungry soul. So if you're hungry for the things of God and you're tired of the things that don't satisfy, this is for you. If you're searching and longing and yearning, it's a sign that God is calling you. So I want you to hear this. As I was spending time with the Lord a few mornings ago, He gave this to me. And it, it ended up rhyming, which is very unusual for me. So I want to share it with you now. Get my glasses, my help. And this is especially for those that are in the body of Christ, that are in the church. It's a word to you, especially, to help those who are yearning, yourself included. This is what the Lord spoke to me. The only ones I will use in this season are those who believe I died and bled to give my grace to the tormented sinner who has suddenly changed into a winner. Oh, my ecclesia, you must hear their cries. My beloved, it is time to arise. Deep within their hearts, they're yearning for me. They just don't know, but they will when they see me in thee. Millions of them, even now, are prepared, awaiting your arrival. What they're feeling is not just emotion, and it's more than revival. It's the knowledge of my glory that is rising in the earth. It's not yet seen what it shall be, but all creation awaits its birth. My sons and daughters are being given the light and love of heaven, a language every human being will recognize. They will be arrested by my love in your eyes. <laughs> Their longing hearts are waiting. Do not let the summer pass. Be unafraid and unashamed to speak my name for some this year may be their last millions are waiting in rapt attention and are quite undone by religious pretension go forth says your father be bold says the word be filled says the spirit be on fire they will feel it Touch them with my love, so meek and tender like a dove. As I have done, so pour yourself out, just as I did the demons you'll rout. If you'll allow my life to flow, I'll help them understand. When you arrive, they'll suddenly know you are there to help them stand. No need to tell them of their many sins which they already discern. It's my love you hold in your heart for them. That's what they need to learn. They are abandoned. They are orphans. Will you reach them for me? You can't even imagine how my heart yearns for them to truly know me. So will you go for me, my beloved, my lovely one, my bride this is not about survival this is not the time to hide do's and don'ts aren't what they need it's a change of heart my holy seed don't be afraid over you I will hover and the dangers I will uncover let your own desires die Anything less than me is a lie. I will pour on you what you need. Take the love of my Father and the Word as a seed. 
and scatter it to all who are crying, so many to whom the enemy is lying. Watch, my beloved, I'll set them free from the camp of the enemy. Tell them they're not alone. Tell them I want to bring them home. Tell them home is heaven where I live. Home is where their heart is. Hallelujah. So while I was meditating and spending time with the Lord, a little later that day, I heard from a dear friend. And she's up on her mountaintop, literally, in the mountains. And some witches came. And she said, Deborah, witches showed up on my property. Because, <laughs> you know, they're looking for a high place. They just don't know who it is they're looking for on the high place. And I said, well, go love on them. And she, you know, I don't know if she was afraid. She was a little concerned about the curses and all of that. I said, oh, you have authority over all that. Love on the witches. They are in this because they have the spirit of the living God calling them into the prophetic. They just don't know it. They're on the wrong side. But you know what I, I also said to her? I said, they are in boot camp for God. They are going to be in the army of God. So I just want to tell you, saints, stop being afraid of the power of the enemy he is powerless in the face and the name of jesus you say well how do we know that <laughs> we know it because the word says so the word of god tells us that all first of all he told his disciples he said all power has been given unto you or all authority actually has been given over you over all the power of the enemy so we don't have to be afraid of the enemy beloved use that authority that you have just use it you say how do I do that you speak the word out loud to the enemy he is terrified I was going to look up in James um, but, I, but I know it by heart it says that if you draw nigh unto God he will draw nigh unto you and if you rebuke the enemy he will flee so that's what you need to do. You need to make a habit of start rebuking anything that doesn't agree with God's word. Sickness doesn't agree with God's word. Pain doesn't agree with God's word. It doesn't agree with the promises. You say, well, Deborah, I've done that. It just doesn't work. That's because you gave up. You quit. You can't quit. A soldier can't just decide to quit or the enemy will kill him. Don't let the enemy do that to you. So after I received that poem, the Lord began to speak to me. And he said, Lord, he said, the Lord said this was to me, but it was also to you. You must draw aside. You must spend time with me. I have so much more to show you. My people need your words. There are many of you that have words for others prophetic words, words of encouragement, words that will edify and build up, not words that will tear down. They've had enough of that. My people need your words. They are desperate for them. They are desperate for you to lead them. So he was saying it to me, but he's also saying it to many of you that are leaders. The people, the sheep of God's pasture are desperate to hear a pure word from the Lord of the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the gentleness of God, the faithfulness of God. He has so much that he wants to give us and the enemy wants to distract us. I have prepared you, says the Lord. Do not quit now. You are even at the door it is about to swing wide open in front of you. Just spend time with me. Hallelujah. I say this to all of you, my beloved. Come out from among 
the compromise. Come out from the Laodicean church. Come out from everything unclean and come to me. I will deliver you. I will show you what to do, where to go, what to say. Let me take charge. <clears throat> Let me take charge of your life. I am leading you into battle, and you cannot do this leaning on the arm of flesh, not on yours, not on anybody's. The storm is upon you, but I will give you wings like the eagle, and you will soar above the storm. I will give you eyes like the eagle, and you will see the plans of the enemy. Hallelujah. You will see the traps that he lays for my people long before he carries out those plans. And with my angels, you will foil their attempts to destroy my harvest. That's what it's all about. That's what that poem was all about. It's the harvest. I will reveal my angel armies to you as you walk with me. You will walk with me. You will write down what you see. You will write down and share under my power and my anointing. You will write what I tell you. Many of you are scribes. Whatever happens, do not touch my glory. That means if you're promoted or demoted, whatever happens... I don't think any of us are going to be demoted this season. He said, I will visit you. And the power I have over the everything in the natural realm, I will give to you. Earth is about to bow before heaven, and then heaven will come down to you. I am not coming to go along, get along. I am not coming to make peace with the enemies of the Most High God. I am coming to take charge. I am coming to take over. All will understand in that day that judgment has come and all my enemies will bow every knee, says the Lord God Almighty. Think of every vile sinner you see as your lost son or lost daughter because that is how I see them wow let me pray for you Father God I just lift up all my friends I lift up those Lord who are fallen those who are struggling with sin they haven't yet realized all they have to do is run to you at the mercy seat Bring them to that understanding, not to flee from you, but to run to you. Because the enemy condemns them. He tempts them, and then when they fall into temptation, they, they are beaten up by the enemy and condemned and told how useless they are. Father, it is time for them to be done with those things. And I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, that you deliver every single one that listens to this video and hears this prayer they would come into agreement and understand that you are not condemning them but you are holding out mercy to them but your mercy is not forever because you will not continually draw them if they keep turning you away right now those father that have turned you away and turned away from you in the past Draw them by your spirit right now and enable them to say, I am done with this or that sin. I am done playing at trying to serve God and serve the devil. I am done with the things of the world that draw me into destruction. And choose life. Choose God choose his peace I speak peace over them right now that the peace of God that they can't even grasp or understand will fall on them right now even as they are crying out to you and saying I'm one of those hungry souls 
Pray for me. Help me. Lord, that they would listen to this prayer over and over and over again until they get it. Until they really understand. Until they know in the innermost part of their being that they are already free. You set them free 2,000 years ago on the cross. You set them free because you had all power and all authority over the enemy. And you made an open shame of him according to Colossians 2.15. And in Jesus' name, I thank you for that word. I thank you for setting them free today. From this day forward, I declare over you from this day forward, you will be able to walk this out because you're going to oh you're going to realize that it's not you serving God it's the spirit of the living God in you serving God listen to this this wonderful scripture it's in colossians the second chapter starting in the ninth verse for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. That's the circumcision of the heart. By putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You were buried with him in baptism. We'll be doing that up in Waldorf this summer. Buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised them him from the dead. Now listen to this. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh he has made alive together with him having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, that's the law, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. All of those things that you could not do in your own strength to obey God's law, that was all nailed to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle uh, over them, of them, triumphing over them in it. Whenever you choose the way of the cross, you have chosen victory. What's the way of the cross? That's when your flesh has to die to your will and your desires. When you know the word of God and the Spirit of the, of the Lord is illuminating the Word to you and showing you or speaking to your heart and telling you, no, don't touch that. No, don't be a part of that. No, come out of that. And for some of you, it might be relatives and friends. I remember when I came to the Lord in 1982, I had to leave all my friends because they didn't want to come with me I witnessed to all of them many of them broke down and cried because they knew what I was telling them was the truth so be armed with the armor of God you find that over in Ephesians 6 go read it and fill yourself up with the word spend time every day in the scriptures every day spend time in the presence of the Lord that's what it is to lean on the Lord instead of on the arm of flesh I love you and I thank you thank you for especially to all of our partners all of my subscribers if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and please like that's one of the most important things you can do is to click the like button because when you do that then it tells the algorithms of YouTube, oh, this is a good video, and they'll present it to more people who've never seen me, who don't know anything about this ministry. So do that for me, will you? And you have my permission to put this on any platform you desire. Amen. Facebook, 
uh, X, I don't even know who they all are, but you do. And Spotify, and yeah, you know, you get the drift. So thank you. Thank you, especially for your letters, your love, your gifts, your prayers, especially for the prayers. We are in a war, and there's nothing more important to us than your prayers. We love you with the love of God, and we praise the Lord for you. I want to tell you something else. Many people feel drawn to me, but I just want to tell you it's the gift in me. I'm just a regular old person just like you. I have faults and failures just like you. Don't put me on a pedestal. Please. Realize that it's just the anointing of the Lord that's drawing you. He's, he's drawing you right now, even while I'm talking to you. He's drawing you. So you think I'm so special. I'm not. I'm just the donkey God rode in on. <laughs> That's one of my one of my favorite sayings because it's so true. If he can talk through a donkey, he can talk through me or you. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.